Hi Calculus, I'll talk you through a couple of these limit problems from section 1.1. So we're supposed to use the graph to find the limit if it, if it exists. And so what do we have here? We have um, the limit as x approaches 3 of the function 4 minus x. And down here we have the graph of 4 minus x. And you know, just you can see that this is the graph of 4 minus x because we can plug in, we can figure it out. So Let's say if x is 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, so yes, the function evaluates to 4. If uh, x is 4, then 4 minus 4 is 0, and yeah, the function evaluates to 0, so yeah, here's the graph. So what's going on? How do we do these limits? So basically think of this as a question. It's basically asking us, as x gets closer and closer to 3, as x gets closer and closer to 3, from the left and x gets closer and closer to 3 from the right, does the value of the function approach the same value? So this line is the value of the function at each x. And so if x is approaching 3, it looks like the value of the function is approaching what? It's getting really close to 1. And if x is approaching 3 from the right, from values slightly greater than 3, it looks like the value of the function is, again, approaching 1. So this one is, like, super straightforward. The limit is 1. As x approaches 3 from the left, the function value approaches 1. As x approaches 3 from the right, the function value approaches 1. So the limit is 1. That's the definition of the limit. As you approach this limiting value, if the function value approaches the same value as you approach from the left, as it does when you approach from the right, then the limit exists. And you can just see that the limit is 1. All right, so this one is a little bit, this one is a little bit nonsensical. This one makes, kind of shows you better why we need this concept of the limit. So here we have the limit of a function f of x as x approaches 2. Well, what is f of x? It's defined right here. So this, all this symbolism is just defining f of x for you. So f of x is a really weird, defined in a really weird way. It's for all x is not equal to 2, f of x is 4 minus x. Same thing we just looked at. But if x equals 2, then f of x is defined as 0. Okay. So you can do that. You can just define a function any way you want. And this one's a little bit wacky. It just says, for everything that's not 2, the function is 4 minus x. But if the function is, if, if x is 2, then the value of the function is 0. All right. So that's, this is what that graph would look like. It's the same thing as the graph of 4 minus x, except at x equals 2. So at x equals 2, what is the value of the function? It's 0. It's telling us that right here in this definition. So it looks a little bit wacky. There's a hole right here. All right, so let's evaluate the limit. How do we do evaluate the limit? Well, we look at what is the value of the function when x gets closer and closer to 2? Not at 2, but very close to 2. So very close to 2, the function's value is here. It looks like it's also close to 2. As we approach 2 from this side, very close to 2, what is the value of the function? Well, it looks like it's close to 2. If we went even closer, it would be even closer to 2. So from both the left and the right, as we approach this limiting value of 2, the function itself is also approaching the value of 2. So the limit exists. We're approaching the same thing from the left as we are from the right. The limit exists, and it's 2. So this is a little bit strange, because the limit exists, and it's 2, but the value of the function at 2 is 0. So just a little bit strange, but the main point is that you just look at what is the value of the function when you get close to 2, not at 2, but when you get close to 2 from the left, and when you get close to 2 from the right. All right, hope that helped. Thank you.